Welcome to Risky Business. I am the bit keeper. For this very special episode, we'll be talking about the most sinister and spooky games. Those truly diabolical delights that keep us up at night and go bump. Also in the night. This is the Risky Business. <laughs> If you survive this truly terrifying trek through the most horrifying and horrendous amusements of yesteryear, be sure to like, subscribe, and enable notifications so you never miss another episode. We began our morbid misadventure with the first game that ever shook me to my very core. As a boy, I would go running from the room and I heard the intro to this vile video vivisection. nefarious narration. Those bells with their terrible tintinabulations. Those bells, 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 bells. We raced by Broderbun Software for the Nintendo Entertainment System in 1986. Deadly Towers is an infamous action RPG. The only thing scarier about this alarming adventure is the journey itself which is not only fraught with perils, but completely nebulous, giving the player absolutely no direction whatsoever. What malodorous malfeasance. Death will visit you, dear traveler, not once, but many, many times. This spine-chilling spooktacular can also thrust unsuspecting players into endless dungeons without warning. But hold out hope, brave traveller, for there is a light at the end of the tunnel. With a wondrous walkthrough or guileful guide, you will actually find that this game is rather pleasant to play. But your hope will soon expire as we walk these unhallowed halls of history, for this next game is truly terrible. This malignant menace visits pestilence upon us with the most vile and villainous of all ghastly ghouls. Released on the nefarious Nintendo Entertainment System in 1986 by Capcom, Ghosts and Goblins features an enemy so heinous, so malignant, so repulsive that only the most intrepid among us should dare to face it. The zombie! Ah oh, yes, as a lad seeing the sight of this gruesome ghoul had me shivering down to my bones and dashing for the door. Look upon its visage and despair! More horrid still is the grim and grueling level of difficulty in this game. I hope you fear not death, dear traveller, for here you will meet its guise many times. And if finally you should defeat the menacing maniacal end boss, you will be forced to return to the beginning to face again the most loathsome of creatures and must hasten once again to the end, if you can persevere. <laughs> Fear not, my intrepid insurrectionist, for these zombies while intimidating can withstand a literal punishment and will be dismissed with a simple lance to its rotting, festering face. <laughs> No 
nevertheless, with the passage of time, I grew to become a man, not so easily startled by spectres and spooks. So truly, it would take more than eight bits of bother to send chills down my spine. Little did I know of the impending doom that would soon occupy my PlayStation 2, a dreadful and demonic disc called Fatal Frame. Unlike Makoto Shibata's Deception series, in which the player got to be the one doing the scaring, here you assume the role of a young woman, investigating the disappearance of her brother in a haunted house. In this ghastly game, released in 2001 by Tecmo, you are equipped with only a camera and you never know when an awful apparition may materialize from thin air to torment and tease. While many such phantoms are benign, herein looks a breed of revenant that will sell you intrusively and can only be dispatched by the most noble and natural of methods. They must be aggressively photographed. Remain the resolute my roguish runabout, for your dauntless dedication will be rewarded with victory if your heart can only endure this adventure. This game's arcane imagery is rightly rigorous, raising one's heart rates to dangerous levels. But this is not the most spectacular spook festive days gone by. That title belongs to one more recent, whose menacing menagerie of monstrous maladies lays to shame all those heretofore mentioned. But oh my, I've forgotten the name, haven't I? Perhaps I should search this place to find some clue. Ah yes, this is all coming back to me now. The next creepy caper is a malignant misadventure unlike any other on this list, for it is legitimately petrifying. Released in 2010 for Windows, Mac, and Linux, Amnesia the Dark Descent tells a terrible tale of a man who awakens in a sinister chateau with no memory. You must wander about the house and brave its haunted hazards, solve its pernicious puzzles and peer into its perverse panorama of peerless predators in order to uncover the mystery of who you are and how you have come to be here. Beware, this heinous house is full of maladjusted monsters, sabotaging sprites, angsty apparitions and vicious vile villains. The most odious feature of this odious exploit lies not only in the deep and permeating sense of isolation, but also the knowledge that enemies may attack suddenly and without warning. This makes the brief glimpses of fearsome foes from afar are the more frightening. You will scramble in the darkness for any source of light you can find to maintain your sanity for just a little longer, all the while trying to solve puzzles. When you think the light is your friend, you will be forced to extinguish your lantern and hide in the dark from a monster, challenging your sanity. And oh yes, stay out of the water. I sincerely hope you've relished this romp through the horrifying history of my most chilling childhood traumas. If you did, please like, subscribe, and enable notifications. Then leave me a comment and tell me all about which games have scared you the most. Until we see each other again, rest in peace. It's that person I just saw.